diseases or advanced diseases. It's been a wonderful work God has called me to do. It's been challenging. It really is. It's, it's a challenge every day when you get up. You face with some impossible situations. But it's encouraging when you read the scriptures and you see that Jesus was a man of many miracles. And he passed this gift on to his people, especially his remedied church. Let us have a word of prayer and we can get started. Dear most precious and loving Savior, thank you, dear Father, for you. Your wonderful spirit, Lord, that has, has brought us to this place. Lord, when we can recognize that our strength is spent, our energies is gone. Lord, we can't even do anything of ourselves. But Lord, I found in your word we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Lord, we look for strength this day in a day of weakness, a day of fatigue, a day, Lord, when we need to be strengthened by your Holy Spirit. We are grateful. Lord, bless this assembly of people here. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, the withered right hand is talking about the medical missionary work. God gave a most precious message to the Advent people. And it was to give us a head start in evangelism. It was to be the door opener. It was to reach the unreachable. And such a way that it could not be counterfeit. It won't duplicate it because it's embedded in love. Now, Satan can pretend to do a lot of things. He can work miracles, but he cannot love. And so the working of miracles must be embodied in the love of Jesus Christ. And so when you do that, you can't counterfeit that because then he'll be working for Christ instead of against him. So the withered right hand is nothing but the doctor and the preacher. And, but Satan has sought many ways to try to lessen the effect of this beautiful message he has given us as a people. Just trying to see how to switch this thing. Did it go? Okay, let me back it back up. Okay. While doctors do not prescribe natural medicine, typically they do not. Uh, it is against their medical code. They have sworn allegiance to a union. And that union is to simply uh, prescribe Uh, medicines that has been that they feel that they can monopoly and um, and so consequently if you use anything out of their prescription you're working against their code but it's a contradiction because many of the allopathic medicines they use is made from natural substance and so it's it's kind of a misconception to think that they say herbs do not cure, but they use herb to make the drugs. Uh, and so we're going to investigate that and see what can we use. God said he has given the herbs for the service of man, and the leaves were for the healing of the nation. And a study published in the Health Service Research Journal showed that physicians and nurses are more likely to turn to alternative complementary medicine than the general public. In other words, when they get a problem, they have a tendency to use the simple herb, or the simple remedies, but they're prohibited from using them on other people, but they will use them for themselves. This is really odd when you think about the fact that few doctors will prescribe I recommend natural medicines in spite of them using it themselves. And doctors prescribe, prescribe supplements. If a doctor starts prescribing or recommending natural supplements, 
instead of the drug, drug companies are going to get really upset because you're cutting out their profit. You see, we are commodities. It's like you go to Walmart and you buy a product. The industry that make those products have a good idea of how they can make a profit. Well, the profit of the pharmaceutical companies is us. And as long as we have a need of their allopathic medicine, they're going to make a profit. And they will not let anyone take away their profit. So you're an investment, believe it or not. Uh, and another reason why doctors ignore the safety and sensible natural treatments in favor of prescription drugs is that the system teaches them only to advise, to, to advise using prescription drugs. So they are following the dictate of the pharmaceutical companies. Complementary medicine is also termed natural alternative medicine. Incorporated, incorporate all manner of techniques and natural supplements. In other words, it comprises of vitamins and supplements, and massage and hydrotherapy, and many other things. Herbs and minerals are among the other things that can be used uh, to help people regain a balance that they may be deficient in. Many of these practices have been used for thousands of years, and they have. Our grandparents, many of you, and witness, use many of the natural herbs that grow in the field. They knew how to go out and gather these plants. They may not know the scientific validation of them, but they used them and they observed that they got results. And they passed that on down to us. But in this final generation, we have lost sight of what our forefathers taught and practiced. And it's an old cliche. Man has sought out many inventions, but God has required that which is past. And he has studied many books, but many books have made him mad. God is looking for simple people that will use simple means by which he can get all the glory. God don't need the fancy apparatus of this world. He don't need it. God can take simple things and baffle the wisdom of this world. So he don't have to depend upon the things of this world, but he can use the simple things of nature to accomplish great things. And the study uh, that we're going to be talking about, that we're looking at the different herbs and the different treatments, they found that 63% of the general working population use some sort or uh, some type of natural healing. And 76% of those working in the healthcare sector, section use some type of natural medicine. So you think that 50% is using natural medicines, that means that's cutting out on a lot of profit of, uh, of all the patent medicine. And they are very concerned about losing profit. So we can break down these statistics and make it very plain that there is problems because there are many different types of approaches from acupuncture to massage therapy to many other practice, chiropractic work. These are good systems and there are many systems, but God only has one system. God is not in any of these systems if he's not to be found in them. So there are many ways of practicing the healing arts, but there's only one way God can sanction and ordain, and that's when his name is glorified. I mean, it's got to be him and him only, because herbs will not do anything without the blessings of God. But once God blessed it and sanctioned them, we are to use them in faith, knowing that if we use the simple things God has given us, God can bless our obedience. Uh, and if we would do them, we would find that we would have less problem with side effects. There are many rules that bind doctors, 
from recommending natural medicines. Many, many rules. Doctors are generally aware of what complementary medicine as natural medicine has to offer. They, they know somewhat about it. In fact, they are better educated than most people about both the orthodox and alternative medicine options. However, they are unable to suggest Many of these natural therapies, their patients do to their employment contract. So they're in a union, a medical union, and they cannot violate that because they sign an oath of a lesion. And if they do anything to violate that, then uh, they will break their rules and regulations. Also, health insurance companies do not recognize natural medicine. They prohibit doctors from what? Uh, recommending natural medicine a non-drug therapy. And so consequently, this handicap in a big way, uh, what we can do. Uh, and it's been a difficult fight throughout the years to be able to work with people uh, and still be able to help them because we know what to do, but sometimes our hands are tied and in doing it. The medical industry is a very large, profitable business. And it has some competition from the vitamin shops and from herbs and many other natural medicines are fastly becoming very competitive uh, against them. And they are concerned about their cash cow. Okay, that means that's that cow that produces a lot of milk. And they're concerned about losing their grip on their cash, cash cow. And so we have to do what's best for us. When you go into a doctor and he talks to you and he tells you, he recommends a particular treatment, before you accept that treatment, you should investigate. And that's with any other, that's even with natural medicine. Why do most doctors disrespect natural medicine? Many physicians are confused about natural medicine, and yet they prescribe beans of pills originally derived from plants. And you think about that. If he's going to recommend a particular drug, many of those drugs we're going to find are made from plants. And I'll give you some for instance of that. Um, there are many drugs that they use for cardiovascular problems, for heart disease. Foxglove is a plant that grows all in the bushes. And it is the number one herb or drug that has been converted to a drug to fight many of your cardiovascular problems, heart, heart attack, and stroke. Uh, sweet clover is another one that is used uh, to convert it into a cardiovascular drug. If they can convert sweet clover, a fox drug, into a cardiovascular drug, why couldn't we just use the plant? What they're doing, they are making it more concentrated, more strong, so that you get quick results. And that's a big problem with people when they're sick, they're anxious to get quick results. And God do not, God is not in a hurry for nothing. God is about letting us go through a slow process of sanctification. A selling in to the faith. A selling in of your beliefs. But these quick fix many times are there to deceive us. We run ahead and then we can have a crash uh, fall. One particular herb that I use a lot is periwinkle. It grows all around here. It's probably growing out in these bushes somewhere. People use them around the house for flowers. Do you know that periwinkle is probably the most greatest herb we have on this planet? And the doctors have figured it out. 
they make a chemo drug out of it called Taxol. It is the number one chemo drug in the world. Every pharmacist know this herb, Taxol. It's made from the periwinkle. You've seen the periwinkle, the white ones, the blue ones, the kind of reddish flowers that grow. And yet, we have been struggling with leukemia, lymphoma, and many other cancer, and it's right there by our feet. God has caused the earth to grow for the service of man. Don't ever, ever forget what God has done. God loved us so much that he has provided the things we need to get well. We have walked away from God. And now we are just, we're mesmerized by all the wisdom of this world that man, we think, have figured it out. You think about it. You've got, you got lymphoma, leukemia. There's an herb right there growing by your steps that you can use that can alleviate that problem. And yet, you trust in a cytotoxic drug called chemo, so deadly that they know that it will not cure you at all. Matter of fact, when they give it to you, it's for palliative care. In other words, it's to simply patch you to sleep and let you die peacefully. That's what it does. Once they give you chemo, they have given up on you. It's just simply a matter of time. They're trying to give you a little more time. But the time you receive ain't worth having. I would rather die in agony with my right mind than to die in a, in a stupor, cannot acknowledge my Savior. So remember this herb, periwinkle. If you're diabetic, you people from the islands, you should know periwinkle. They use it for high blood pressure and diabetes. You have let the American way mesmerize you. You forgot the way your fathers have led you in the past. And if you have forgotten how God led you in the past, you don't have a, you don't have a future except you can remember how God led us in the past. Your ancestors, maybe not educated, didn't go to college, but those people knew more about treating disease than these professors in all these medical universities. You don't believe that, do you? I tell you, it's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what gave them that wisdom. Taxol is an anti-cancer drug, which is known clinically uh, to work against ovarian cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer. So, and it has some deadly side effects to it. All right? Do you know the percentage of the cure rate of this chemo drug? And this is the best one. It's 3% out of 100. All right? You got 100, and it's 3% out of that going to make it. Uh, you understand what I'm talking about? Your chances are better playing Russian roulette. It's a simple fact. And so, uh, but by simply using a simple, taking a simple leaves of the periwinkle flower and making a tea out of it, and drinking it systematically every day, change our lifestyle and our diet, remember that God gave man a perfect diet and his perfect character. He gave Adam fruits, grains, and nuts. After the fall, he gave him fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. For a perfect man, and after the fall, he gave him vegetables. These vegetables was not an afterthought. God did say, well, I forgot to give him some vegetables for his food. He didn't do that. Man had no need of vegetables because he was perfect. The vegetables were to be a medicine. And what was the purpose of a medicine? To restore man back to his perfection. It was to what? Fix the blood. When man sinned, his blood became diseased. Every disease is a blood disease. Every sin is a blood disease. There's only one sin. There's only one disease. I know you beg, beg a difference with me. You say, no, I got arthritis. I got diabetes. I got heart attack. I got high blood pressure. I got, it's one disease, and that's a blood disease. All right? And you say, no, I'm, I, I know somebody committed adultery. I know somebody lying, stealing, killing. 
There's many different types of sin. It ain't but one sin. And that's the transgression of God's law. Okay? And there's ain't but one way to fix it. How do you fix the one sin? Only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? Only by the blood. I mean, that's it. That blood fixed every other sin. You think about Adam, all they ate is the fruit. We done committed adultery, we done lied, we done killed, we did all this stuff. And our sin is no greater than the sin Adam committed. Because sin, no matter what degree you may think it is, they all are the same. They are a transgression of God's law. And the transgression of God's law caused the death of his only begotten son. That smallest sin and that greatest sin did that. They're the same. Because, well, I did a little sin. No, ain't no such thing as a little sin. They all are the greatest. And so the one blood fixed the what? The one sin. If you're an adulterer, the blood. You're a liar, the blood. You're a thief, the blood. Let's look at health. Arthritis. Arthritis is a condition of overconsumption of purine and uric acids, eating too much animal food, eating too much denatured, devitamized, demineralized food, consuming too much protein in our body, too much fat. All of this have rendered our blood too acid full of cytotoxic chemicals in the system. These chemicals now is causing a reaction in our body that's producing an inflammatory reaction. Inflammation in the body is the body's attempt to get rid of this toxins out of the system. It's trying to get it out. And so inflammation brings about pain. That's what arthritis is. So how do you reverse that? Fix your blood. Go back and eat those foods that will what? Bounce the pH, render the blood more alkaline than acid, drink more water to flush the acid out of the system, get regularity in your bowels, and you can fix it. Well, then you say, well, I don't know. Some herbs, why some herbs do not seem to work? I tried this and I tried that, and, and it don't seem to work. And well, I, I, I had garlic for my high blood pressure. It didn't work for me. I had a little golden seal for my diabetes. It didn't work for me. And then you say, well, I don't believe these herbs work. Keep in mind that it's not just the golden seal of the garlic. It is consistent obedience. God is trying to affect the character as he rejuvenates the body. Do you understand that? God is trying to fix the whole man. You're just trying to get rid of your anxiety and pain. But God is concerned about your mind, and your mind will put your body in obedience. And so you say, well, look, yeah, I, I, I drink that little tea, and it tastes nasty. It didn't help me. Did you drink enough water? Did you get enough exercise? Did you cut back on the consumption of that fat? Did you stop eating all that junk food, those potato chips? Did you quit doing all that? No, but I took the herbs. Remember that little fruit that Adam and, Adam and Eve ate was a great sin. All right? So that little disobedience is a great sin. And God will not heal you in disobedience. If he does that, he gives, he sanctions disobedience. Can't do it. Oh, he'll give you a little reprieve. He'll say, now look, if you do a little better, you know, it'll be a lot better to you, for you. So um, I just wish to God that we could understand these simple principles. Uh, there's a substance called DMSO. Now, they make this DMSO from pine trees. They make it from pine trees. And it has a profound effect on the body. Ellen White said, there are healing properties in the pine and the fir and the cedar tree. She said, don't be rushed to go and cut them trees down. There's medicine properties in them. God's people should know this if they read the word, especially the spirit of prophecy. In the pine tree, there's an element called pitch nodinal. It's from the maritime pine tree. Also, there's DMSO, a water substance in the pine tree. 
It's a sovereign. If you have arthritis, it'll knock it right out. With obedience, with total obedience, it will reduce the inflammation, it'll stop the pain. You would be amazed how well it works. It is so dynamic that if you want to strengthen your herbs by simply mixing a little DMSO in it, you can actually strengthen the potency of the herb 20, 10 to 20 times stronger and get a better reaction from it. That's a simple thing. Also, DMSO is a blood thinner. That means that if you have blood clots and you want to take an herb to help thin your blood, we know there are many, like fever few. We know that garlic will thin your blood. We know that. But there are many herbs that would do it. But let's say that you've got a large clot and you want to thin it out. We know that red clover will thin your blood out by simply making an extract out of DMSO and some of these blood thinning herbs, we can dissolve those clots. We can do it. And we'll be amazed just how effectively God can do these things. Now let's look at some of the things that we can do with DMSO. It can work as a blood thinner. If you mix it with turmeric, especially if you have blood clots, it's fantastic. Plus it increases the effectiveness of turmeric and all of us know how dynamic turmeric is. It is probably the most studied herb it is, yet when you take it, you're not getting the full uh, effect of it. But just in the look DMSO in it, it boosts the strength of it up. Ginger, garlic, and DMSO, all of these are really powerful, especially if you mix a little DMSO in there. You can. You have to get the 99.9% .9 pure. And it, you can. You can mix it and make the extracts and your teachers out of it. I teach a class where I teach the students how to make their own extracts and teachers. Now you go and buy a couple of men teachers, right? An extract. And you get a little one ounce bottle and you pay 10, 12, 15 dollars for it. I can take that little one ounce bottle and turn it into 20 bottles from that little one ounce bottle. All I need to do is put DMSO and water in it, and it will duplicate it 20 times. That shows you how strong DMSO is. I know you don't believe it. I demonstrate it all the time, and the students don't believe it. I tell them, I say, I can start you in a essential oil business. Give me $100, and I start you in a factory. They don't believe it. Then I asked them, I said, now, you remember the lady had the crude of oil and she was going to make a little bread and die? I said, y'all remember that, don't you? And what did Elisha tell her to do? Go prepare some for him and go and get every little pot and bowl you could find, right? Did the oil ever stop? No. Let me show you something with you. That's an old-fashioned miracle. I'm going to give you a new-fashioned miracle. Take one ounce of DMSO, mix it in water. Okay, so now I thought she would tell me that. Let me tell you how to do it. She won't know how much. Take one quart jar, one third water, one third DMSO, one third alcohol. You don't have to use alcohol. You can use vegetable glycerin if you don't want to use alcohol. One-third water, one-third DMSO, one-third alcohol or vegetable glycerin. Then take that one ounce of peppermint or lavender or oregano. I don't care what it is. Put it in there, in that one quart. Mix it all up together. In less than five minutes, you'll convert that, that quart, to one quart of peppermint or lavender oregano oil or whatever you want, it'll convert it to it. You will not be able to tell the difference. All right? Now, it's not, it's not finished because, remember, the crude never stopped. You know, that oil kept coming. Take that one quart and go get you a five-gallon bucket and mix that into that one, I said, one five-gallon bucket. 
it would come a five-gallon bucket of five gallons of peppermint oil. You ain't stop there. Just keep on doing it. It will not stop. It will keep duplicating itself. And I know you don't believe it, but it's the same type of miracle. I do it every year. I teach the students how to do it. It'll keep, you will never have to buy lavender or peppermint or essential oil again. Never have to do it. It will continue to reduplicate itself. God is no respect to person. I'm telling y'all, he's not. And so uh, if you have a heart problem, a cardiovascular problem, hardening of the arteries, you can take some DMSO, some cayenne pepper, uh, some hawthorn berries, and mix it together. That will clean out your arteries. I'm going to give you a remedy that works better than that. If you have, high, you have um, hardening of the arteries, high cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and you want to get your arteries clean out, okay? You can eat them clean if you're not on a high blood pressure medicine. That's the only drawback. Eat two grapefruits a day, 30 to 60 days, and it'll clean your arteries all the way out. Take all the fat and plaque out of your arteries. Reduce your LDL and increase your HDL cholesterol. How about that? That's a good way to get well. Eat yourself and enjoy every morsel of it. But the only drawback, you cannot do this if you're taking, um, if you're taking high blood pressure medicine. Now, um, let me go to another one here. This is one you're familiar with, metformin. Y'all familiar with metformin, right? Yes. Eat two grapefruits a day for 30 to 60 days. If you're not on high blood pressure medicine, it will clean your arteries out. Don't make any difference. Don't. Pardon? I like this audience. They ask me these very difficult questions. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Y'all seem like y'all really want to study some. Okay, that's all right with me. I like that. Uh, it makes my job real easy. Have you ever seen this commercial OxyClean? Yeah. And they get this platter of grease. They've been cooking pork chops and everything in it, and they dip it down in some dishwater, and when they pull it up, half of it is squeaky clean. Yeah. What caused that to clean it so fast? It's the citric acids. Yeah. The citric acids multiply, break down the fat globules, Tiny little globulins that release it from the pots and pan and platters. Citric acid dissolves the fat. All right? So the grapefruit is very high in citric acid. When you drink it, it breaks down the fat in your arteries and squits it out of your body. Now let's talk about metformin, your diabetic. Now what can we do? To deal with diabetes since that is a condition that we all are troubled with. We know somebody got it or we got it, right? And they give us metformin, which is the diabetic medicine. Well, God has not forgotten the diabetics either. Uh, there are natural things that you can do that can do the same thing. Okay, so God has not forgotten the diabetics. You know, they need to get help too. The French late like weed is where they make metformin from. That's it right there. French late like weed. You can herb, you can buy it. They make metformin from that. All right? How about that? No side effects. You make your tea out of it and you drink it. And it's fantastic. It would work just like your insulin, bring your blood sugar down. Now, if you don't want to use, if you can't find the French late-like weed, 
then golden seal is a natural insulin herb. That's a natural insulin herb that you can use. You start off with about a half a teaspoon of golden seal tea, mix it in some water, about four or five ounces of water, and drink that three times a day. If that don't bring it down, increase the amounts until you bring it down. Now, you, in order to do this, you're going to have to stop eating all those starches. People in the islands, the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands, all out in the Pacific, they love starches. You know what I'm talking about. They love all kind of roots and rice and bread and starches. The problem is all that is good food, but all your starches is sugar. All right? Your body converts these starches to sugar. Potatoes converted to sugar. Rice is converted to sugar. Bread. All of this pasta is converted to sugar. So if you eat too much of that food, you say, well, I don't eat no more sugar. I'm not talking about a little white sugar in the bag. I'm talking about the potatoes, that rice, that bread, those dumplings. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, that's good stuff. But it's a starch. You see, and God ain't trying to take it from him. He just don't want you to eat too much of it. He said, I want you to what? Eat a variety. So you don't just have one big thing of dumplings and bread and rice. You have some vegetables. Have some complex carbohydrates, a salad and some greens and collaloo. Put it with that to neutralize some of that starch. And you won't have that problem. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's, 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 they call it goat roof weed. That's another name for it. That's another name for the French late like weed. They got different names for it. Okay, now let's look at an aspirin. You know, the most mildest thing about an aspirin is they went over to the third world countries. They saw these natives using this bark that they use for pain and for inflammation. And they brought it back to Bear and all these other aspirin companies, and they made an aspirin out of it. And they never gave them any credit or money. But the white willow bark is where they make the aspirin from. All right? So you can drink the white willow bark. It will not irritate your stomach. It will not give you gastric ulcers. It will not give you peptic ulcers because it is not concentrated. When they make it, they make it so concentrated with synthetic chemicals that if you take too much of it, it can cause irritation in your stomach and give you stomach ulcers. But if you drink the white willow bark tea, it won't do that. And it's a wonderful aspirin. Uh, you can mix it with a little cayenne pepper, a little hawthorn berries, white willow bark, and, and a little ginger, you can make a wonderful natural aspirin from it. And you don't have to be dependent on the pharmaceutical company. That's another herb that many of you may not know it down here in Florida. It's called, we know it, especially in Tennessee and Arkansas and Louisiana and a little further north, we know it. It's called pokeweed. Uh, when I was young, they called it poke salad. Oak salad. Yeah, you, you ever heard of that? See, I don't know nothing about this. <laughs> but people that was born up a little north from you, they know a lot about it. When they brought us over from Africa and from the Caribbean islands to slave, they was used to Kalaloo. But when they got up into Tennessee and Kentucky and a little further north, there was no Kalaloo. The closest they could find was poke salad. It was a bush that would grow about yay high with plenty of green leaves on it. And they start cooking it and making greens out of it. And it's delicious, but you got to know how to cook it. If you cook it and eat it right out the pot, it could cause some serious problems with your kidneys because it has a toxic protein in it. You have to cook it three times and throw the water away. 
all right? These ingenious people figured it out. And they would cook it three times, exchange the water, and they had beautiful, beautiful green taste, just like spinach. Many years later, the pharmaceutical company began to investigate this protein. And they found out that this protein was a protein inhibitor. A protein inhibitor is a protein that inhibits a virus in the body, boosts the immune system. They found that this protein, when given to AIDS patients, was 1,000 times stronger than the strongest drug, AZT. It's a protein inhibitor. It means it's a protein that inhibits the viral infections of AIDS. I've used this herb many, many, many years, and I love it. It's one of my most favorite herbs. Not only this herb is a protein inhibitor, this herb also is fantastic for mastitis. When women have me nursing a baby and the milk get blocked in the milk glands and their breasts swell up and become very in inflamed, they would make a poultice out of it with a little slipper am and pack it on the breast and it would pull out the inflammation. That's pokeweed right there. You got it. Poke salad. Okay. The Indians used to take the purple berries and they would use it as a dye, the dye their clothes. They would also take the purple berries and eat a few of them and it was high in iodine for thyroid problem. But you got to know how to do all these things. You see, we got to be re-educated again. We have been so educated in the allopathic system that we have lost the simplicity of God's system. So yes, those herbs, that, those berries and those weeds will work, but you got to know how to use them. If you use them wrong, it causes you some problem. That's a very powerful herb. But if you got herpes, if you got AIDS, it's most effective. Now, they have come up with other protein inhibitors. That's why Magic Johnson is doing so well. He still got AIDS, but he can't give it to nobody. He's okay. He still got the viral component in his blood. But you see how long he's living? He's just as big and bubbly. He's doing all right, ain't he? Oh, yeah. It's the protein inhibitor. Now, if they, would, if they knew one other thing, they could clean it out his blood. There's an old German remedy. It's called simply take some iodine, and you simply take three drops of iodine in a quart of water. Drink it. Increase one drop every day till you get about 12 drops. Do that several weeks and go get tested. It will knock your viral load down. Every time you do it, your viral load will drop. That, as your viral load drop, that means that the virus in your blood is what dissipated. It'll clean it up where it will not be measurable when they test you for a HIV infection. These things God has given his people that we may be the head and not the tail. But we're so satisfied being the tail that we really have convinced ourselves that God will never use us to do anything. And we don't have to do that. Remember now, pokeweed is a very powerful herb. Very powerful herb. And you really need to study this herb before you take it. Just don't just don't chow down on this herb. This herb is serious, I'm telling you. But it's Well, the pokeweed, you take the young leaves, the young tender leaves, and you juice them. And you have to drink, you have to mix it with water and drink some of the juice. I'm not going to tell you how to do it because somebody's going to do it wrong and get real sick. But if you want to know how to do it, you contact me and I'll make sure you know how to do it right. But this is an herb you don't play with. That's a tincture of iodine. Yep. Is it what? No, just the way I did it. Take three drops, put it in a quart of water. You have to make sure that you add one drop a day and drink that quart, another drop, and drink that. Keep building up till you get about 12 drops. You cannot, and I stress this, you cannot drink 10 drops a 
a 12 drops in a quart of water the first time. You can't do it. You can't do it. You got to build your body up to it and your body will not reject it. So I'm telling you these things and I'm praying that you will not be so rash and go and do something so fast. If a particular procedure is dangerous, I'm going to overemphasize it. Talk to someone before you do it. Now, here's one right here. And I don't know if it would play. If the young man in the back, if you can play that on the screen, see what that play. If not, I'll play mine. And this is a CBD oil. Since she was two, though, the seizures have become constant. I don't know if she's going to hear this. On their once happy, joyful little girl. She started to really decline cognitively, and she was slipping away, and she just wasn't keeping up with her twin. I think he's finally got the point. Did you hear that? Gervais syndrome. It is severe intractable epilepsy. The seizures start during the first year of life and are unstoppable, difficult to control, and very damaging. For the next two years, the Figgies tried everything. Strange diets, acupuncture, and dozens of powerful drugs like Valium, Ativan, Phenobarbital. But nothing seemed to help. Even worse, some of the medications nearly killed her. After one dose, she stops breathing. And after two doses, her heart will stop. Did you have to do CPR then on her yourself? Yes. I remember when her heart stopped and I had her pulse and I lost her pulse. There was just nothing. The ambulance is on its way. She survived. I'm looking at the video. It's not playing. It's on the screen. was five years old. When things were at their worst, she just sees all night, and the kids are sleeping either in my room or next door. They can hear her seizure scream all night, 50 times a night. And Chase would come in in the morning and just, this is her twin, <laughs> and just hug her and, like, rub her head and say, I'm, so, I'm just so glad you survived through the night last night. Matt had been deployed to Afghanistan, and the only thing he could do to help was start scouring the Internet. And he stumbled onto this video of a child using marijuana. So how's everything go? She had to four days without a seizure. I'm like, wow, this is having success. I mean, specifically, Gervais, this is interesting. It's natural. And while he couldn't ever imagine taking marijuana himself, he was now in the stunning position of recommending it for Charlotte. I was like, we need to do so now, this little girl is having hundreds of seizures every week, repeatedly, right behind each other. And it's going to kill her if they don't stop it. So they had to, they want to induce, give her a, uh, into a sleep to let her brain rest. And um, her father discovered that marijuana could stop these seizures. Now, I wouldn't give marijuana to my dog. I'm going to let y'all know that. I wouldn't do it. But the medical system have figured out how to separate the THC from the CBD. The THC is a narcotic. The marijuana has two components. It has bad and good. It's the devil and it's Christ. Okay? I'm going to be honest with you. And that THC ain't nothing but the devil. That will get you high and make you crazy. But they found that the CBD has some very powerful medicine properties. So they was able to grow the THC out of the plant. And now it's legalized almost everywhere. You can buy it at Walmart, anywhere now. It's called CBD oil, hemp oil. Now, many of you have eaten hemp oil on your salad dressings. You know, and you, uh, hemp seed. You didn't recognize that was marijuana seeds. <laughs> okay. She said, I would never tell no marijuana. I, don't, I beg a difference. <laughs> you didn't know it, but hemp is marijuana, all right? But they figured out how they can actually get rid of the narcotic and use the good part of it, and it's really effective. And so in doing that, they was able to eliminate these seizures. Anyway, I'm not going to play because you can't hear it that well. And then Charlotte's condition got worse. 
300 seizures a week, you hear that? almost two every hour. She was not talking or moving, basically catatonic. She gave her a little of the CBD oil the first day. It stopped seizures, stopped it. And I knew then, as many epileptic people I work with, I had to try it. I've used it for years. It is really effective in stopping seizures, epileptic seizures. If you know someone having epileptic seizures, you might want to look into it. Yes. No, but I work with schizophrenics. I work with bipolar, um, uh, schizophrenia, all types of mental illness, Alzheimer's, all different types. Uh, there are other things you can do for that. And I may talk about that before I stop here, because I'm not going to keep you all alone in, tonight. We've got a lot we're going to be sharing tomorrow. Uh, in Isaiah, the 38th chapter, there's this word that God brought to mind about Hezekiah. He had an incurable disease. And Isaiah told of God to give him a fig treatment. And he took figs. And he gave him a, a fig poultice. And he healed him. Let me tell you something about figs. Figs and celery, a common compound known to fight uh, lymphoma and skin condition, skin condition, actually has been been a second method of action that makes it particularly deadly against certain aggressive breast tumors. Researchers at Duke Medical uh, University reported. In other words, they began to go back and study the figs. They found that it was really effective in dealing with certain types of breast cancer. They found that there was a protein in the figs called solalin that block the cancer, especially HER2 cancer. There are many different types of cancer. The HER2 cancer has a protein that these figs can block it. And they were getting tremendous amount of success with it, especially ovarian, gastric, and breast cancer by simply blocking that protein that feeds those particular cancer. I use a lot of figs uh, in my in my uh, in my my facility. So. Um, what we do is we take figs, we make a tonic out of it, and we make a bowel cleanser out of it. We mix it with psyllium and slipper am with a little senna, and we give that to drink. And we make a herbal tonic out of it, and people drink it. And it's really good. If a woman has breast cancer, her two breast cancer, we make a poultice out of it, as Isaiah did, and we shine a UV light over the top of it. And that UV light will actually penetrate through the skin and will stop that HER2 cancer. Now, they found this out at Duke University. They know that the fee works, but they will never prescribe it. Do you know why they will never prescribe it? They won't make no money. The pharmaceutical company have not paid them millions of dollars to find out that fees can stop certain types of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. They Use the fig to figure out how to make a patent drug out of it. So, um, I'm going to get ready to stop. I am just want to share some things with you tonight just to kind of whet your appetite. And then tomorrow I can get into some more things with you. Let me summarize with here tonight. Uh, I'm going to speed it up right here. Okay. With ginseng, 
It can really give you stamina, especially if you have some problems with, you know, being weak and exhausted. Ginseng can give you strength. White willow bark is an anti-inflammatory herb. Licorice root is a very beautiful herb that can work in place of prednisone, a steroid. You don't have to be addicted to that. Oats makes you sleep and rest uh, and kind of calm your body down. So, and there are many, many other medicines, uh, herbs that can be used. And like I said, tomorrow I'll take a little more time and go through these here. I think I'm going to stop right there because it's late and I know many of you probably been working. Yes, ma'am. The oats, you can make a tea out of it. Just boil it and drink the water out of it. It won't make you sick. Make a what? It, it calms you down. It will calm you down. Some warm oat uh, tea will relax your system. Now, understand that when you use natural medicine, you got to use it in conjunction with other things. That means that you've got to be following as much of the well-known health practices. You know, you don't want to eat and go to bed because your stomach will be working and that'll keep you up. So you want to make sure you keep yourself hydrated and get plenty of exercise. So all those things can help when you uh, use the natural medicine. Tomorrow I'm going to, since the biggest thing is COVID, and people are concerned about it. I have over 500 COVID patients. When it hit New York, I was one of the principal people that was working with the Adventist churches up there to fight against COVID among our people. And I work with a lot of them all over the country, in Houston, in Florida, Miami. I have a lot of COVID patients. And while they're trying to perfect an antidote, God had already given us one. And that was, he said, there's healing properties in the pine. I'm telling you right now, there's pine trees growing all around you. You need to understand how to go out there and pick those pine needles, wash it off, and drink it, put a little ginger in, a little garlic, a little peppermint, and make a habit of drinking it. You will not have nothing to worry about, all right? And because I work with so many COVID patients, I have a little personal air purifier right here and it's purifying the air three feet around me all the time. I also have charcoal nose filters that I can put up in my nose because I work with so many of them. And so tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about some of these things, what you can do and how God has not left us defenseless because COVID is running through the land. COVID is a great blessing. It really is, it's a great blessing. It is an opportunity for God's people to what? With because God said these diseases will be coming around the world, but it won't come now, God's people. If we be obedient, and God will tell us what to do, how to fight these conditions. He really will. But don't be foolish. Don't live like the world and expect to get the protection of God. Don't expect that. So once again, thank you all so much. And like I said, tomorrow we have more time. I can uh, go through some things and, you know, and try to make it as simple as possible. Some of you may have some particular problems or issues. I may can address some of those things and maybe can just share some simple things that can help you. So thank you once again for coming out and may God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, you take it, you know, it's a preventative. Yes, yeah, you're gonna do that. We want to thank Elder Wilson for um, addressing us this evening. And um, 
I noted that on your website, Elder Wilson, you had you had been making um, COVID-19 kits when it first started, right? And um, you, you, you're, uh, it, it's been sent all over the world because people are requesting them. The 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 um, pine needles that we're talking about is basically from the pine trees that are around here. Okay. What I'm finding more and more is that there are so many herbs that or feet brush against on a daily basis that we'd rather uproot and put in the garbage bin. We are a blessed people. I want to give thanks to God that he's opening our eyes to the blessings that he has just um, scattering around us, we can benefit from, and I trust that we will take heed to the counsel that we are being given. I was thinking today, with COVID, as you say, COVID is a blessing. I'd love to multiply that blessing. We, I know in here we have individuals with concerns about getting the gospel out far and wide, right? And we have many church buildings that are owned by the church. We are renting here that is locked up and uh, just not being used. And one of the things is that these buildings, some of these can be used 24-7. They can be used 24-7 because... Right now, there, there is a medical missionary um, program that's aired from Jamaica via Zoom. They have over 700 people listening on a daily basis, 9 to 5. I do not see why one of the churches here in Naples cannot develop something like that where you have 24-7 airing of the gospel in sectors because we have enough people around to carry that forward as a chain reaction. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, because you're setting it up there. It can be done. And uh, things can be set ablaze from any one of the churches that we have here that's locked up. And um, all we have to do is have a relay going on. Is something to think about and get acted up on as possible. So again, we want to thank you for coming out, and we want to thank those who are listening in and watching in on Zoom and uh, and uh, YouTube. Tomorrow we will be here also, and um, we're inviting you to join in. Come out because we have sufficient space to accommodate individuals here. Let's um, brave the weather. <laughs> I mean, the frank truth is that we are in no danger here if we walk according to God's guidance. We're in no danger, all right? We do not need to kid ourselves. We have a work to do, and we need to get it done. So thanks again for being here, and thank you, Elder Wilson, for coming. We know it took an effort to do so. Let's stand for prayer. Oh, Father, under God, once more we want to thank you for your love towards us. You've demonstrated that in so many ways. And although we have been 
conditioned by the world around us. You warned us not to be molded in the mold of this world that we allow ourselves to be. But you're giving us a second chance so that we can come out and be remade in your image. Give us wisdom to pull away from the enemy, to draw close to you so that we will be victorious over the enemy and his grip will be have no effect upon us because we'll be sheltered in the safety of your arms. As you teach us, give us wisdom to surrender our will to your purpose for our lives and help us to see the beauty of being vessels through which your love and your grace and your mercy can reach others. We want to serve you, Lord. We want to be effective in our weakness for you. And we know you've put everything in place for that to be so in each of our lives. So give us the wisdom to surrender and to walk according to your purpose. And then grant us the privilege of rejoicing at your coming. 